the Madman. Welcome to the top cards of Custom Hearthstone, week of April 20th. Let's start off Noggin Fogger Elixir. Shaman, two mana spell. Echo, transform an enemy minion into one that costs one less. Design two stars, balance three stars. The Volve hits all of the enemy minions and makes them cost one less. Noggin Fogger Elixir hits one, so I feel like the card is quite a bit weak right now. The problem with any card with Echo, though, is if you buff it by one mana, then you're kind of, you know, you can suddenly cast ten copies of it instead of five copies. So buffing a card with Echo is very hard to do. Here are some interesting ideas. Uh, maybe this card could cost a zero mana, then it would be similar to Mutate. Uh, take off the Echo. It would be very similar to Mutate in that case, maybe too similar. Another idea is to make it one or maybe even two mana, and instead of Echo, add in Twin Spell, which is more of the set's mechanic, anyways. Eliminate the word Echo and add the word Twin Spell. There, brilliant card. Apothecary Hummel, a priest 5 mana 3 4, battle cry, summon a 0 1 test subject, cast random spells on it until it dies. Uh, note that this says cast random spells on it until it dies, so it'll only cast targeted spells, at least that's the way I read the card. Design, 2 stars, balance, 4 stars. Because of the high rolling nature of Apothecary Hummel, where I'd say most of the time you get exactly one card off of it, but sometimes you get like a ridiculously large amount of cards of environment, uh, it's really creative. Like, the idea that a test subject is being created and then just being tested with, with all bunches of random spells, is kind of awesome. I will nitpick the 0-1 test subject. It should just be summon a test subject. Test subjects are 0-2s. There's no real big difference between a 0-1 and a 0-2. Wasn't worth mentioning. But there's also another problem with the design. There are some cases uh, that aren't addressed with this card. Example, the test subject gets hexed. That didn't cause it to die. What if the test subject returns to your hand through Shadow Step? That didn't cause it to die. And sure, the intent may be to just stop casting it when that happens, but it isn't addressed in the card and it might be difficult to address. And this isn't a priest spell, but what if the test subject becomes immune in some way? That can happen in a few different ways. Commanding Shout is cast. Uh, you're a priest, so you can potentially take someone's Commanding Shout. And that's not immune, and it can still be like Shadow Word Pained. Uh, or Shadow Word Death if it becomes big enough, or something else, but you get quite a number of spells in that case. There are a few fixes to it, none of which are particularly elegant, like you can cap the number of spells, summon a test subject, and cast up to five random spells on it until it leaves play, using the word leaves play to cover the transform and the bounce to your hand, as well as the die condition. All in all though, it is way too high rolly. Sometimes you will get like six cards, and that's disgusting when it happens. The balance is not actually that far off. Maybe like, uh, all I'm suggesting is Apothecary Hum will be like a 3-3 three, three for it to be balanced, but just because a card is balanced doesn't mean that it should be printed. Stonehill Offender, three mana, four, one neutral, minion with Rush. Battle cry, discover a Rush minion. Very aggressive looking turtle. Uh, design, four stars, balance, three stars. I enjoy the remix on a beloved card of Stonehill Defender, but it's way too overpowered. Three mana deal four is Shadow Bolt, essentially, from Warlock, and certainly not every class can do three mana deal four. Not only is it three mana deal four, you also get a card with it. It's such a stronger Shadow Bolt since it comes with a card that it does need to get nerfed. Uh, my suggested nerf is 4 mana, and not just that, but it also should be a 4 mana 3-1. Still too powerful at a 4 mana 4-1. And yes, this does ruin the mirror synergy of Stonehill Defender, but this card was never going to be balanced if you just mirrored Stonehill Defender. Am I bluffing? Choose to play either a double or nothing secret. Double is when your opponent casts a spell, it casts twice. At the start of your turn, this switches sides, so if it didn't trigger, then the opponent gets the double. Or nothing! Uh, secret, when your opponent casts a spell, counter it. At the start of your turn, destroy this, which is a one turn counter spell. If your opponent casts a spell, it gets countered. If they don't cast a spell, then they successfully read your Am I Bluffing card, and the nothing goes away. This basically is reading as choose one, play either a double or nothing secret. But 
You know, I feel like this mechanic is very roguish, where you're playing hidden stuff. Is it okay that it's kind of bleeding from the druid flavor tree? Yes, I would say. It's very interesting. It's either a counter spell for a turn, or it's a double your spell if they chose not to try to pursue the double reward. Design five stars, balance five stars. Unfortunately, weak right now, but still I'm going to give the balance a five star because honestly, the card's pretty complex. I don't really see much of a way to change it. Most of the time, your opponent will cast a weak spell into it and then nothing will trigger. Stonehill Apprentice. One mana, one, one, taunt. Battle cry, discover a taunt minion that costs three or less. Another nod to Stonehill Defender on the same week. Design, four stars, balance, three stars. It's like Stonehill Defender, but changed to be a baby Stonehill Apprentice. It's kind of cute. Right now it's too powerful, and because it's a one mana card, the fact that I'm requesting it be a two mana, one, two, is still enough for me to lower the balance rating by two, because that's a pretty big change, uh, adding 100% mana cost for just one health, basically. Too powerful as a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, which essentially draws you a card. Just consider that it's like better Firefly and it's like, wow, that's way too good. Malagos Enraged. 9 mana 10-6 Dragon. Neutral. All spells deal no damage. Really interesting take on the evil side of Malagos. Design. 4 stars. Balance. 5 stars, huge asterisks on both ratings. So I'm really torn when I'm reviewing this card because boy is it a very, very polarizing text to just write all spells deal no damage. On the one side, this punishes decks that only have spells that deal damage, which is kind of okay because it's an archetype that Blizzard doesn't really want to see. Hearthstone at its core is minion on minion combat, and a deck that only has spells is not necessarily that healthy. Plus, the decks with all spells, such as Freeze Mage, could always run Voodoo Doll or the Polymorph that gets rid of Melagos as well. And 10 stick stat line is obviously really bad against every other deck, so honestly, nobody would run Melagos Enraged. Which goes into like another problem, like the card is balanced? in the sense that it's a tech card against spells, but it's really niche in its usage. In short, the card is really interesting, but I believe that such a card tech should probably never be printed. It's got one of those really dangerous potentials to shut down like complete decks. And then you can make the argument, well, I mean, if a card is getting shut down by this card, that's their fault, right? And to some extent, you're right. So it's like, eh, I'm torn. Magic Shield. A mage, three mana legendary spell. For the rest of the game, your unused mana crystals are converted to armor. Let's say it's turn six and you cast Magic Shield and you don't do anything else. You don't use your hero power. Then you would just gain three armor. And then turn seven rolls around. Maybe you skip that turn, you gain seven armor. Design, one star. Balance, one star. Absolutely ridiculous. Where the problem lies is that when you play this in the late game, you're just gaining 10 armor each turn. You gain so much value by having the ability to wait. It's why Warrior is so strong. But with Magic Shield, it's kind of like if Warriors got the ability to use their basic hero power an infinite amount of times. Yes, you better believe that Warriors would just press the button five times a turn and then pass. Magic Shield is exactly the same thing. This is too dangerous of an effect to print even at 10 mana, because you're a control deck, you control, 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 stall until the end, you cast your magic shield at 10 mana, and then you start to just rack up the armor. Not to mention how unfun it is to play against, because you feel the pressure to do stuff against the mage, you play your minions, they kill your minions, they just sit back and gain 10 armor a turn, eventually they're at like 100 armor. Boy, is that terrible, and then the win condition for those decks, you better believe, would be to just fatigue you out. Resident Sleeper. Karhu the Iron Drake. It's a warrior legendary hero. 10 mana, whenever you gain armor, you have a 50% chance to gain twice as much. If your armor reaches zero, destroy your hero. You gain 25 armor instead of the usual five when you play this. The 
Hero power becomes five mana Iron Fury. Spend half your your armor, destroy all minions. Very very interesting hero card here. Uh, design three stars, balance three stars. Despite its extreme creativity and the fact that I think it doesn't fall into the usual infinite value trap that a lot of the hero cards do, it's got a number of issues. First of all. Boy, is it unfun to have a percentage chance to gain twice as much armor. It's like so much RNG for no reason. Just say whenever you gain armor, you gain 50% more. Rounded down. You gain half as much rounded down. Something like that. Karhu is kind of interesting in the sense that uh, it makes your health irrelevant. But there's a problem with that. And this is also in design. Uh, there are other warrior hero cards out there. Dr. Boom Mad Genius. You play Karhu first, and then you play Dr. Boom Mad Genius, then it's 10 mana gain 25. But it's not just 10 mana gain 25 armor. Uh, you also have the potential to use Iron Fury like once first, and then you replace it with Dr. Boom Mad Genius. That's where the card is perhaps a bit overpowered in terms of balance. And I asked myself, how much armor would I be willing to spend, uh, spend 10 mana for as warrior? And I think it's around 20. So 25 plus you gain the Iron Fury, that's a bit too much. This card might be interesting if you print it after Dr. Boom Mad Genius has gotten rotated out, because then the card is itself uh, the only hero card you can play, and then you can't cheat out this if your armor reaches zero, destroy your hero effect. There is finally the problem that some decks simply cannot deal with this card. Even with all the things like addressed, even if you manage to redesign this to be good, uh, to be like balanced and whatnot, fundamentally there are a few decks that just cannot beat Karhu the Iron Drake. For example, uh, big decks, for example, Resurrect Priest in its current form. They have no direct damage, they have no charge damage, uh, they have no spells that deal damage. So they summon a huge board, you just Iron Fury and destroy all of it. You literally play Karhu and you just win against some decks. Captain Imposter, a 4 mana 1 1 legendary warlock demon. Death Rattle, transform a random enemy minion into Captain Imposter. Love the uh, flavor of this. Design 5 stars, balance 3 stars. I think the card is a simple fix. Simply change it from 4 mana to 3 mana. And there's a very relevant comparison card right now. Voodoo Doll. Captain Imposter is much the same way. It transforms a random enemy minion, not even the minion you are aiming for, into Captain Imposter. So you're of course encouraged to play Captain Imposter and then coil it, but it's got the complications that they have to have only exactly one big minion for you to always hit it. It's interesting in the sense that, you know, they become Captain Imposter and then if you have minions, you can get your Captain Imposter back. Uh, which creates some interesting defile situations, but defile is in wild, and Captain Imposter defile is not as strong a combo as it looks. It doesn't clear the board completely because you also need to have a board, and if it does clear a board completely, your board also dies. So, pretty interesting, creates like subtle plays. Realistically too slow. Finally we have Dragon Claws, a warrior weapon, 7 mana, 4 attack, 3 durability, cost 1 less for every dragon in your hand. Design 5 stars, balance 4 stars. What mana cost would be fair for Dragon Claws? And I think 5 would be a fair mana cost for a 4 3 weapon, comparable to Arcanite Reaper, a 4 3 instead of a 5 2. Sure. So, how easy is it with the current incarnation for a 2 mana discount? I'd say pretty easy. You cast Dragon Roar, and you get your 2 dragons, and then you cast Dragon Claws. So it's a little bit too dangerous, I'd say, at 7 mana, because at 4 mana the card is good, and at 3 mana it's really good. I think that the card could be 8 mana instead of 7 mana, I'm a little bit too scared, but I didn't dock it 2 stars on balance because I feel like 7 mana might be fair enough, like maybe if you were really pushing the dragon archetype, maybe if warrior were weak, you could get away with printing this at 7 mana. And really, dragons aren't being uh, played right now in Warrior, so a card to like push Warrior into Dragon, maybe that's not so bad. Kind of like Draconid Operative would get a pretty low balance rating from me if I saw it now, but you know, Blizzard actually printed it, 
Probably a bad design philosophy at the time, but Priest was really hurting. To be fair. But that's kind of my comparison with this card. It's like, could it really be printed at this amount of mana? Boy, would that be dangerous. Uh, would require a lot of testing. It would push the dragon archetype hard. So those are this week's cards. I thought this week had a lot of interesting designs in it. And the balance of the cards were all over the place, which is always fun when you have to like think about, is this card really fair? And if it is unfair, by how many margins is it unfair? And we saw like cards that varied across since I rated cards between one and five stars. So I'd say this is an interesting week to look at if you're trying to read into my mentality of, is this actually balanced? 